Hi guys, welcome to the video. Uh, this episode is slightly different to what we normally do, um, but there's a lot, a lot of information in it. Um, this video is for anyone that is interested in what a professional footballer is up to during this quarantine. Um, I did a podcast with Nader Manua. I've done one of those before, for those of you that's uh, watched my videos before, and there's gonna be a lot of information in it. We're also joined by a very special guest who is Vero Boquette. Um, who is the all-time leading Spanish national team goal scorer for the women's team. And Neda Manua has played in the Premier League, absolute legend of the game. So it was a pleasure to be joined by both of them. So I'm going to keep it nice and short. I'm going to show you a quick highlight reel of both of them in action. And let's get straight on into the podcast. Farrell, pushing forward. Able to get through the defenders and plays it outside to Rodriguez with space to work with. Rodriguez! into the path of Boquette. It's to George Rodriguez, who slides, gets a touch to it, and it's in the back of the net. You guys talking about what player, Vera on the ball right now, talking to her yesterday, she felt when you play a team like North Carolina, she can be there with great possession. Call it down, we got a goal, uh -huh. set up by Vera. Here's Vera. Vera at the center of the park. Through ball to Rodriguez. Rodriguez with an opportunity. Rodriguez shot. Blocked. Goes over and in. Excellent run. It's Rodriguez. Two for Utah. Hey guys, uh, I hope you're all doing well for today's podcast. I thought I'd do something a bit different and have two guests come on and we can all talk about what's going on right now in the world. They don't really need an introduction and frequent listeners would have heard their episodes before, but for those who don't know, may I introduce to you, <coughs> Miss Vero Boqueta, <laughs> former Spain international and a Utah Royal and the Brit abroad, Mr. Jack Blake. Captain for the Real Monarchs. Does that seem good enough, guys? Perfect. Just about, yeah. Okay, so I consider myself very lucky to call you guys my friends and even more fortunate to have you here today in the studio given the current climate. And, you know, I'm keen to hear from you about what's going on in your life. And I think this could be, um, this could be a good show. This could be a really good show. So first of all, I need to ask, like, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm alive, so that's I'm a positive. doing okay. That's, that's a big positive right <laughs> exactly. now. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, I'm just worried for the situation in Spain. Mm. It's uh, really bad over there. And uh, obviously all my family is there. And uh, yeah, so that make it a little harder. Mm -hmm. Because I think all of us, we are just frustrated about this situation that we can't train. We don't know when we're going to be back and all that. But at the end of at the day, the most important is always our families. How about you? Same as Vera, really. You know, having family back in England and not really knowing what's going on back there, it's it's a little worrying. Um, it's interesting to see how different countries are reacting as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think people in England initially thought it was a bit of a joke and, you know, like it's not going to come over here, it's staying over in China. And then mm -hmm. slowly people are starting to panic. And then over here in the U.S., it's like England, but on such a greater scale, yeah. huge area, population. It's just everything's up in the air and you just don't know the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So for you two now, uh, I'll jump in at this at the end. Things have obviously changed quite a lot and we're very limited in terms of what we do. But we're here now in this time 
and we're very used to doing certain things. So how do you replace that? What is a day in the life like for you now, Severo? What do you do now? Just run it by us. Yeah, actually, my mornings are really, really busy because okay. it's the Spanish time. Yes. Because here we have like uh, seven hours less. Yes. So I just woke up and uh, just talking with my family, my friends, doing some workouts at home. And um, yeah, until lunch time. My day is kind of okay. After that, it starts to be a little boring. Yeah. And just, yeah, you you have nothing to do. Just watch some shows, read some books. And uh, I think these first days, it's going to be okay. But uh, whenever this is going to take a, a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously it's going to get worse and worse. Yeah. How about you, Joe? Mine's simple. I'm just trying to entertain a two-year-old 24-7. <laughs> is that simple? <laughs> That's the thing. Is in that theory. Simple? That's complicated. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously a worrying time, but it's just difficult trying to entertain him. I mean, I think I went out yesterday to Target to buy a walkie-talkie, and I knew at that point it was like, Ah, so you can keep some distance. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. Uh, can you come find me? Can you come find that me? That was more for the wife, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's, um, for me, um, not going into work has been different. But then this also kind of felt like when I was here in the off season last year because I wasn't allowed to, well, not that I wasn't allowed to. I couldn't go back home because my daughter was still in school. Mm-hmm. But now the school's been taken away and it's like, pfft, you wake up and the same thing that you have, Jack, where you have to entertain a child. I've got three kids and they're all desperate for attention and they're at three completely different stages of their life in terms of what you can actually give them. So it's not really one thing that unites them. So... It is very, very different. But while we were training, I was always a guy who loved days off anyway, but maybe not four, five, six, (laughs) seven, eight days off in a row. Mm -hmm. So it it is, um, things have changed. Things have definitely changed a lot. And we're going to talk more about that. But for now, because it's so early, it feels okay. Just okay. Not great. Not horrendous, but just okay. But you keep hearing more's to come, more's to come, more's to come. And then, yeah, that's when things are going to be different. So I was with my um, my mother-in-law's husband, Bernie, yesterday and I asked him, are there any questions you'd like to ask if you were to speak to footballers and see what this, how this is affecting them, basically? And there were three big topics. One was fitness, one was boredom, and one is about staying healthy. So I'd like to start, if possible, by talking about, like, what are you doing to keep fit at the moment? Like, how does that all work? Fire away, whoever. Well, for me these days, like, we we did some stuff in small groups outside with some balls. Which is very different to us because we're not allowed to do anything at all. Yeah, like, we actually, we are not allowed to do it. But if the group is small, and uh, at least until yesterday or two days before we did some some stuff Mm -hmm. and now we just have a a ball (laughs) at home (laughs) so uh, you can do (laughs) whatever you want there and uh, yeah we get some uh, workouts that uh, we can do at home but you have no any material or anything so you have to to deal with that situation too and um, yeah and personally like I worry about my fitness, but not that much yeah. because it's like I don't know when we're gonna be back. Yeah. And whenever is the first game, mm-hmm. so um, yeah, like you just have to adapt. And I think that the football players and athletes in in general, uh, that is something that we always do. Yeah. We adapt to the situation really well. Yeah. So we have to find a way to to do it. Who gives you your training sessions? Uh, or uh, coach or physical coach. Okay. So um, yeah, we get we have a, a app, so we get all the, okay. the workouts. Is that there. team builder or something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, Jack? Same thing, really. Um, I think because the situation was so n- unique, like no one had ever experienced it before. Mm-hmm. I think at the start I was a bit like, right, I can't even plan my sessions. I can't even plan the timeline because we don't know when we're coming back. Mm-hmm. And so it's just literally like day to day at the moment or week by week. You know, initially we thought there may be a possibility of, of training together and 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 having the football, just the training sessions taken away, you know, forget the matches, but just being able to kick a ball is just feels so weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, another thing that's been difficult as well is is just trying to make the, the training at home um, just enjoyable, you know, not having it too... Um, 
uh, strategized and mm-hmm. doing the same workouts. You know, it's it's been very difficult. Um, for me, I've just been going out on a run outside and then coming back in and doing just like body weight circuits in inside my house. Mm-hmm. Um, again, not always easy to plan timings. This and is true. <laughs> this is true. It's just yeah. I mean, it's so up in the air. It's so difficult. Yeah. Just you, are you expecting a second child? Yes. Just mm-hmm. you wait. If the second, how when 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 should you? July fourth. All right, you best hope you're back in football at that point. <laughs> listen, when it's two on two, I don't think the free time's available. No, definitely not. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. As, I'm the same as you guys, really, in terms of um, trying to do whatever you can. But the thing which I've really struggled with the most in this first week is not knowing when we're coming back. So certain things I'm doing, like I'll be pushing myself, and maybe it's because I'm older, and maybe it's because I'm more cynical. But I just, I think to myself, why? Why am I doing this now? What's the relevancy of this now if I'm not going to be playing for two months? Right. You know, and that's a big psychological hurdle for me because for me to go out and do it, I'm leaving my wife with three children at home. And you have to weigh up like almost, is this worth it? And I, I like deep down, I know it could be, but you're not 100% sure anymore because you don't have the end point for, the, for our whole careers. We're either in training and we're trying to do extra to help training or it's the off season and we're getting ready for preseason because you know the exact date when you have to be ready for something. But now when it gets pushed back further and further and further, that did the run I did yesterday, is that going to affect us if we start the season in June? Is it going to affect if we start in July? Like, should I, well, sorry, I'm going to talk like an old person now, but Vero's <laughs> old as well. But obviously, I should tell like the introduction, Vero, you, this happened in your first week of preseason, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's a different situation to what myself, Jack, what we're in because we're already essentially in the season. So the level of fitness that they require at that point is different to what we were doing. Like, do we need to maintain? Do we need to push? Whereas for Vero and her team, they need to be trying to get ready for a season to begin. And as I say, when you get older, like my situation, rest is not exactly the worst thing in the world. I think how much rest can I actually have? That's the thing. Like for me, I feel like uh, it's more mentally uh, yeah. difficult than physically because I feel sometimes like playing football, training, or exercise is an addiction. You know, yeah. you want to do it every day. You yeah. feel good when you do it, and when that's taken away, mm-hmm. it's more of a mental burden than a physical burden. I just feel like I don't feel myself. Yeah. I can be a bit ratty and just like, <laughs> I don't, I tell you, if I'm quarantined two more weeks with my wife, it won't be the virus that kills me. <laughs> yeah. I, res- I respect the honesty, but yeah, the, f- the fitness side of it is w- now with, with sports being taken away from so many athletes and so on, I feel like we've lost our purpose. And when you lose the purpose, that's when you can kind of lose your motivation a little bit because for the whole time that you've been doing whatever you've been doing, there's always been a reason behind it people that aren't necessarily athletes and stuff who look after themselves in general they even they have particular goals whether it's to work out x amount of times in a week or to try and be able to lift this weight or to try and get ready for that run you know that's you have something there but when that thing's missing like it's a bit of a test but i'll move on from that let's (laughs) talk um say how are you keeping yourself entertained i very you hinted that you were watching some dvds and things like this but (laughs) how else how else are you really doing it uh I actually I watch some games like obviously no in life because yeah. we have no football anymore but um, yeah I I love football and I'm uh, getting uh, education for like to be a coach uh, in the future so mm-hmm. I'm uh, having some uh, work to do at home analyzing some situations yeah. some videos and uh, that is something that I do then I also I I write for a for a Spanish newspaper, so that uh, also. Which paper is that? Uh, El País. Okay. So it's actually is like the biggest uh, newspaper in Spain. Jack, I told you she's a big deal. <laughs> no. I told you she's a big deal. <laughs> Name drop. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something that also uh, entertains me, and uh, and obviously like the majority of my time is with my family. I feel that I, I'm closer and I see more uh, more times my family now than before. Mm-hmm. And uh, the same with my friends. And um, yeah, and the rest of the time, especially evenings, there is just to watch some show and just don't think about nothing else. Than How about you, Jack? Uh, I mean, not to get too serious, but I, when, when listen, this is get as serious as you want to. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it. when when it, when all this first happened, um, 
I kind of thought you can look at it two ways. One is, you know, everything's been taken away, like the football, everything like that, and what I love. Or you can look at it as you get to spend more time with the family. Um, I think I saw an interesting post online today, that, uh, an article that was talking about how, um, you know, in years to come, we'll be talking about this time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're all still alive. And uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I say we'll be coming years to come. I think we'll talk about this time and I think reflect upon it. And our, our kids will remember the time that we've, we spent with them. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's that's an important thing. And, you know, getting to spend quality time, you know, we're always traveling, we're always going away and I don't always get to spend quality time with, with my kids. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's that that's for me is, is a, an important factor at the moment. Uh, that's, that's great. And something you said there in terms of what it's like with the kids and so on, I think that highlights some of the problems which some people have when they transition from playing to not playing. Because this is almost like a snapshot of what it would be like after you retire and for some people it's probably a good thing because it's like a test period for them because it's only going to be for a few weeks maybe a few months whereas for the people who retire this is for the rest of your life like how are you realistically going to be and i'm sure the way that people react to the situation is completely different depending on the person so i as i say i enjoy it because i it would not enjoy it but i can cope because i love spending time with my family but there's some people who've never spent time with the family and rightly or wrongly however they want to see it it's because they didn't want to because their love was always the game and their family was second you know so this type of situation for them could probably be quite hard yeah i feel as well like you know sometimes you can take the fact of your family and spending time for granted and, and when that comes but on the flip side you can also take the game for granted and yeah. when that's taken away I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really interested to see what you know, the standard is like the passion involved in the football when it comes back. Yes. Because I think people have missed it so much. Fans, players, I mm -hmm. think the game will just evolve and grow even stronger. Yeah, for sure. I, I can, that's I can that's that. our motivation. Exactly. Before yeah. you were saying that uh, we, we lost our purpose, but I think that uh, we have to to believe that that is actually going to happen. And whenever we are back on the field, that will be perfect. Uh, Jack, let me reveal something to you here, yeah? So I'm good friends with Vero. And we had a bet at the end of last season. So you tell me who you think is going to win this bet based on what you've seen so far. Vera. <laughs> based on, based on what you. Based on what you've seen so far. And I'll give you some a backstory on Vera. So she's the all-time top scorer for Spain, correct? Correct. But last year for the Royals, how many goals did you score? Zero. Okay. It was a tough year. So, so she didn't <laughs> score last year, okay? But this is the all-time scorer for Spain. So there's the context. I bet that I will score more goals than her this season. That's what I've said. Yeah? How do you feel about that bet? I mean, you could have scored a hat-trick in the last game. Thank so. you. This plays into it. <laughs> Again, that's context. If I get three chances a game, you know, it's only game two. I can feel my way into it. That's exactly what he texted me after the game. <laughs> right, no problem. Three yeah. chances a game. I think I could look at that from yeah. the point of you've had the chance to score exactly. and you've not taken it. So. I know some strikers who don't get three chances a month and I had three in one game. <laughs> So just think about that. Who would you go for? I think I'd have to go for Vero now, yeah. She's not scored in, in Utah. But she's not had the chance to score recently. Oh, she has. Oh, she has. <laughs> not that many. Listen, not oh, that clear has. like oh, you the other oh, day. She has. Oh, she has. She has. <laughs> but, like, listen, how many times this can happen? That you for just me, have a bad... A ter no, for me, like, a terrible year that you just... Well, you just didn't score. Maybe. That just happened... You know how many times that happened in my career? Mm -hmm. Last year. But you're getting older now, so yes. it's different. <laughs> you know, the goal scene's yeah. a little bit smaller, the goalkeeper's see, a bit bigger. When you see the end of your career, you just, you are hungry for more. Exactly, and I'm older, so I'm hungrier for more than you. <laughs> That's the thing. So, well, Jack, we we're putting this on the record. Who are you going for? I'm going for Vera, yeah. Yes. I am. No respect. Yes. I have faith no respect. End of the podcast. Yes. Ryan, it's over. Let's yes. call it. We're done. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But that's good. That's you know that's something which I'm looking forward to because I, I I'm what I say I'm confident. I'm not confident I can do it. But I know if I score first, it puts her under pressure. When people are under pressure, you know they behave quite differently. You know what I mean, mm. Jay? Mm. So she she'll feel that. I love the pressure. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, that's not true. You do. That's not true. <laughs> so as well as the boredom and the fitness, how are you guys staying healthy in terms of just trying to avoid contracting a virus or whatever? What what are you doing on a day to day basis that's different? I just try to stay at home. 
that's what I do the majority of, of the time. And if I do something, it's because I really need food. So I have to go to the store or I meet uh, some teammate just to to kick some balls or, or something like that. But um, seeing the situation in Spain, that is really, really bad. Um, I think that that made me think even or taking this situation even more serious. Mm -hmm. And I I try to do what we're going to have to do, everyone, like in a few days, but just before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just try to be healthy. And then at home, just just try to eat healthy because that is also yeah. <laughs> important. And, uh, For sure. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Uh, the same, really. I think, you know, I think all three of us, having the cultural background and from being a different country, mm -hmm. I think we've seen what's happened in Europe. And I think a lot of the people that aren't necessarily taken as serious over here in the States um, aren't necessarily aware of the severity that it is over in Europe. Yeah. And so I think, like Vera says, we've just been staying at home um, because we've seen what's happened in England and in Europe. Um, and so, yeah, I think I, I remember seeing an interview yesterday that really annoyed me was the, the spring break interview. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't great, was it? And I was just thinking if, if these people, because it is selfish, is these these people yeah. they don't have um an awareness of other people around them and maybe if they had that um cultural background of knowing what's going on in europe or even the knowledge of just just knowing what's happening um they wouldn't be making those decisions and i think it's those people that are putting everyone else at risk you know for some of those people that are doing what they're doing i think some of it although they are selfish because i found that during this time a lot of people have really shown who they are and they've been incredibly selfish on lots of different levels from maybe hoarding and selling things on the black market so just the way that they just behave in general because they say oh you know it's three percent death rate or you know i'm young i'm not gonna die or whatever <clears throat> i think some of that comes because a lot of people don't understand why we're doing what we're doing i don't feel and that's for me it's a shame because i feel like the information is available but people just they either don't want to listen to it or they'd rather hear a conspiracy theory or whatever and don't really match up because it's if someone says it's three percent death rate, like that's that's a fact. But why are we doing like ask yourself why are we doing what we're doing right now? What's the reason for it? Because it's such an extreme that most people in their lifetime have never seen anything like this before. So surely it must be important. But then still go out and have like a blase attitude about it. You know, it's it's not obviously it's not it's not destroying the world, but it's defeating the whole point. You know, it's such a such an important time right now why would you ignore it you, never in your life again might every political body around the world tell you to do the same thing i've never seen anything in you so never ever ever never in my lifetime probably never see it again so why ignore it you know it's it's crazy i'm trying not to rant i was just i'll be honest i was on the i was on the phone to my to my cousin just before i came in and i got out let out all my frustration so i could come in here and just be calm and serene <laughs> And then when I walked in, uh, Ryan had set the mood lights and stuff in the studio. So <laughs> so I felt it was in a good place. I was nearly down that dark alley again, but I'm just going to go back. So just ask some simple questions now. What do you miss the most about playing? Mm, that's a good question. Oh, thank you. I've had a few of those today. That's a good question. Isn't that right? For you me, I, right? think, I think it's the, the camaraderie with the teammates mm -hmm. and uh, enjoying the winning feeling and celebrating as a group. Um, and you know dealing with defeats as well but I think for me it's being around my teammates and having that camaraderie mm -hmm. what about you Vera? yeah I think it's, it's the same it's more like that normal life that you just go you train you play you prepare like uh, for the weekend for the game and um, obviously yeah you're like my teammates are my family mm -hmm. here so you are used to to see them every day and, and now it's uh, that's gone and uh but then obviously it's like the the personal feeling that you just want to yeah just just reach your goals and just play for fun and and play because you want to win and um, and now it's like all that is is gone mm. and what would you say you miss the most just in general life mm, i think just to to hang with people just i mean i'm coming from spain so we love to be outside we love to be like mm -hmm. in the social side of life and um, and and i i actually think that uh, in europe especially spain and italy 
that they are in, in maybe in a worse situation, mm -hmm. this can be one of the reasons that we spend even yeah, more time in, that's in very social true. That's uh, a very, things. very good point, yeah. Yeah, point. and I think that is what I, I miss more. Like, I'm now a player that uh, I just go for training and, and then I go home. Like, uh, I love to to be there and be with my teammates and then maybe go for coffee, be outside with uh, some of them, like go to the city, just do things. And, and now it's like, well, now it's time to, to be at home. Mm. What about you, Joe? Same thing. It's just that social interaction. It's almost like... It's almost like we're in prison cells at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have that outside world interaction. Um, it definitely does feel like that at the moment. Mm. It, we it seems like we took so many things for granted. Like, just we just got so used to it. Yeah, this is just what we do. This is what we do. But we never really appreciate it until it's not there. I always used to s treat that the same with uh, injuries. So we've. And maybe not Vera because she's perfect. But <laughs> yeah, sure. you, yeah, we've we've had injuries yeah, we've before, had <laughs> and when you have an injury which stops you from doing something it's only then that you appreciate how before that you could do everything and then when you have to learn those little small movements again and this that and the other that's i'd always find that to be the hardest part like if i ever hurt my back or something i'd be like how on god's earth was i able to walk before whereas now i might fall in over places um i think for things that i miss the social side of it this is me being completely honest now this is why i picked you two to be in it because i can be honest with you too because i like both of you even though other people are listening but yeah <laughs> i like both of you so the team thing i do miss but only to a certain extent because i am i think across the years which i've played i've been able to pick and choose who i actually want to spend time with outside of that so everyone within the team they're good people but there are other people who I give all, give more time to, people I speak to outside of work, because I still, at times, I will always call it work. So I don't necessarily miss always being in there and doing the same things, because everyone's everyone at RSL, like, I've got a lot of time for them. They're all really, really good people, but there are a few people within that group who I think are great people, who I really like to spend time with, but that's not everybody. <clears throat> so I don't miss being around everybody, but I miss being around certain people within the team. You know, that's the thing. Do you think that'd be different if you were back in England? I think no, I don't think it would. I think it's just as I've as I've gotten older, um I've I've essentially been planning for the end from when I was about twenty seven years of age. And going in was always fun and good. But upon going out there certain people say, Well, I'll see you later Whereas other people I'll see you tomorrow, which is the next work day. Mm. And the see you tomorrow's they're good people and I enjoy being able to work in that environment where I like everyone but there's certain people who you love and who you love to spend time with. So that bit there is not quite the same for me. The whole training and playing and winning thing. Yeah, I do, I do miss that, but I've also done it for a long time as well. So I, as I say, I don't take, I, I promise you, everyone listening, I don't take it for granted. I really appreciate it. But it's not the same for me as say, it could be someone that's a bit younger who, say you're in a different position now, Jack, because you have a child, but people who maybe are younger, who are single, who have no children, who have no, like, that type of real-world life responsibility. Like, football is everything. Like, when they walk through, that's the sole purpose for the whole day. Mm -hmm. But for me, I feel like I have a sense of purpose outside of that as well. And that's when I'd be with my family or I'd choose to be with my friends who are playing for the team or whatever. But that's that's more me than, people, than walking through the door. And in terms of just um, what I miss in general life, I'm the same as you. I think I'm quite social. And it's just a sense of missing the, the freedom, the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Some days I might do nothing. Other days I might just leave my, like when, when my wife was away in the summer last, last summer, there were certain days where I'd finish training and then I wouldn't even go back to my house until it's time to go to sleep because I want to be here. I want to be there. I want to go and see this. I want to go and do that. But that freedom's now, it's like, it's missing now. And it's frustrating, but when you understand why it's going on, you can always come to terms with it. But then also, it's a lot easier to come to terms with it when it's less than a weekend. If this is week seven or eight, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. Yeah. Might just hear me just shouting somewhere, somebody, somebody please talk to me. <laughs> we should do a podcast again in like three months. Literally. Let's see how, how we are. Exactly, like we're recording this now and you'll see us in seven, eight weeks stressed. We've all gone grey, everyone's like, oh, so fed up. Oh my goodness gracious me. Um, how about this then? So in this period that's going on now, if we talk specifically about here, nothing about outside of these shorts just yet, what are your biggest worries? 
Biggest one is is the season. It's like because I'm here, like, and and now you were talking that I think you guys you are like uh, really really lucky because you have your family here. Yes. In my case, it's like I live alone. Yeah. And it's like all my family is in Spain, so yeah. Like for me, obviously, the the only reason why I'm here is, is because to do this, yeah. Yeah. It's it's like my job is uh, to to play and to try to win and uh, that's all. So right now it's like okay when we're gonna be playing is actually it's gonna be <laughs> a lee or it's gonna be cancelled or what is gonna happen and uh, how that will uh, affect to to my normal life and uh, if that happen if it's cancelled i should come back to spain or i should stay here or mm -hmm. uh, or what is uh, going on but I, we have to understand that this is a unique uh, situation so there are no answers and uh, i don't think that we have we don't gonna have uh, any answer in, yeah. in a long time. Uh, for me, it's just keeping my my wife and, and obviously Leo safe. Um, big worry for me is obviously lose pregnancy and mm -hmm. making sure that she stays healthy. And then when hopefully the birth is successful one and, and everyone comes out of it safe and healthy. And that's for me the biggest worry. So I wouldn't even let my wife go into the, the supermarket at the moment. Yeah, that's that's fair. And you're an example of somebody who could be affected by people being blasé about the virus right. itself. Which is why it annoyed me so much. Yesterday. Yeah, like, <laughs> but still, again, a lot of people just don't understand what's going on and how it affects, say, the virus itself can kill people. But the virus as a side to it, in terms of how it affects other things, can also greatly affect other people as well. But people are being so short-sighted at just looking at the death rate of this, but then missing the bigger picture. And the bigger picture was ultimately why we're making the decisions that we're making right now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's on paper, it seems like it's okay, but it could literally shut down so many places, so many things, so many lives of so many people. Like, there are examples in the world which show this, but nobody wants to see it. And that's the thing that's really troubling me, to be honest. I think my biggest worry, again, is, is probably not knowing when it's going to start again, like Vero said. And... Also, because the situation is so new, unique, as you say, I don't, most things in life I've seen before, so I can picture how it's going to get better. But now, in this situation, I have no idea. And it's that uncertainty within me, like I think I'm quite logical, so I don't panic. But I look around and some people, when they feel uncertainty, that's exactly, but I look around and some people, when they feel uncertainty, that's exactly what they do. They start to panic. And the more people that panic, the more it will affect your life, even if you're not feeling the same as them. So that's, as I say, that's something which, that's my biggest worry is not knowing what comes next and trying to reassure my wife, my kids, my friends that things are going to be okay. And I'm sure they will be, but I can't say how. <laughs> so I feel like it's less believable when it comes from my mouth because now it could just be a story as opposed to a fact because I don't, I don't have any facts. Nobody has any facts. And it's trying, as I say, try and, I'm not going to, I'm not going to panic anybody. That's not, what I, what I do but it's harder to be reassuring when if someone asks you why you think that there's nothing below it it's just on the surface it's just a hunch and it's definitely not the time for hunches anyway <laughs> Jack how about your um, YouTube channel has it been affected whilst this has been going on um, that's interesting actually I, I filmed my first one today um, since since everything you know shut down and things changed um, for the first week I was I was um you know, I was making sure that my house was in order first, making yeah. sure everything was right, and we were, pro you know, prepared and had everything in the house. And then now it was it was yesterday I made the decision to to try and you know start filming again. And I actually think that that you know whilst everyone's at home, it's almost like the perfect yes. thing to yes. to explore. Um, and yeah, so I've just started picking that back up again. I've had hundreds of messages from people online asking me to do it, so it was just more the reason to start up again. And, I think um I think for me it was just trying to trying to help people as well that are in my situation so a lot of people that are wanting to do home workouts or mm -hmm. um a lot of people that watch my channel are into fitness and and health and and I guess it's yeah just trying to give other people entertainment as well you know if they can sit at home and watch a 30 ep 30 minute episode of of my YouTube video yeah. then you know people are getting through that that way so yeah it's crazy isn't it to think about it that say I I, I underappreciated sport but that's all I watch and now that there's nothing to watch, like you might as well take away my Xfinity, take away my subscription to this. I feel like I've got nothing. I'm there. Whereas so, so very, you can watch 
uh, TV series and all this, but I never watched TV series. I would watch, I don't know, a fifth division game in Latvia mm -hmm. if it was on TV and nothing else was on. I would do that. I would yeah. be that guy. <laughs> but now it's not on. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious me. What was the last thing you watched? Last game? No, the last thing you watched on TV. Last thing I watched on TV of like actual value or that was I was in the room for? You were in the room for? <sighs> what was it? Oh my. Uh, I think it was... Paw Patrol on Nick Jr. <laughs> I think that's what it was. But in terms of an adult program, uh, I tend to watch the news a lot, even though it's the same thing, but I just I just need it. Uh, just... So the news, kids programs, and phew, they're just, there's certain limits. My wife likes to watch like Kardashians and stuff like this, but I have to leave the room. That's nah, not for me. Nah. That's, that's absolutely not for me. I'd rather watch a kids program on repeat for the rest of my life than watch that show. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, you've both hinted at things to do with this before, but Vero, for you, for example, I want you to be very specific about what life is like for a certain member of your family in Spain right now. Well, right now in Spain, they can't get out of the the houses at all. So the army and the police are on the streets and uh, you are just allowed to, to go out alone and if you really need food or to go to the pharmacy. So my brother is a policeman, so he's right now sleeping like four hours a day because he has to be like working the majority of the time. And, um, and my parents and my grandma, they live together. So um, yeah, they, they are in a high risk because my grandma is uh, 85. My parents are younger than her but uh, also like in age that uh, is very risky and uh, yeah so i i try to to talk to them so that they they can keep uh, being at home uh, as long as they can mm -hmm. and um, yeah i think right now it's the same situation for everyone because the the government just took the decision to to close the country and uh, so that's everywhere in spain is like that yeah okay so 50 millions of people are just in the houses. In the houses, yeah. How does it, how does that work for say the TV companies and so on? Do they still have their shows or? Um, some of the shows are on, but they're more like the news. Yeah. The rest of the time it's just movies or uh, or shows like a series, and um, that's all that. Uh, Do they know when things are going to change? No, no, obviously not, because actually right now it's like every day is like a double of. Uh, of people with uh, the virus and uh, so many people is uh, also dying. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the worst is still still to come. Yeah. Is still, still to come, and uh, we also see Italy that is just next to us, and they are even worse than us. So I think everyone in Spain expect more or less the same situation than than Italy. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little better because we close everything before but um, yeah right now nobody knows when when that's gonna happen and or to get better and I think the, the biggest worry now for everyone there is just the job yeah like we're gonna be even whenever this is gone it's uh, it's gonna be like a, a big financial crisis and yeah. the economy will be like uh, really really bad mm. how about you Joe um, I mean yeah same same not quite as extreme in England. Um, I, I think the quicker that every country in the world does what Spain and Italy are doing and, and have people in the house, I think the quicker that we're going to get over this. I think whilst everyone's not on the same page and you have people out partying at the same time, people are quarantined, it's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't, you know, it makes it worse and makes the people that are quarantined stay longer. Um, in England, it's, it's not quite at that stage. Um, I spoke to my family today um my uh my dad's a driving instructor so he's he's self-employed so he's his business is is massively being affected right now mm -hmm. um and within being in such close contact with people and teaching people on a daily basis you know you can understand why people wouldn't want to do that so i think the quicker the government as well in england especially is give small businesses people unemployed um you know the the knowledge that they will be covered financially and that their business aren't going to go down because we are heading towards a recession, yeah. you know, if the governments don't step in. Um, and I think that's that's such a big factor right now is to, to protect the small businesses. 
um, my family in Arizona, uh, grandfather and um, and uh, my grandmother and my auntie and uncle. It's the same same as it is in Utah. You know, people aren't panicking to the extent where everyone's staying at home, but like they are, the grandparents are high risk. Um, I know the grandparent, my, my grandma in England. She um, she's she's you know eighty five, eighty six. Um, and yeah, so she's massively high risk. It's just extremely worrying time. You know, even my, my auntie in Leeds doesn't want to go and visit my grandma just in case she gives it mm -hmm. to her by accident. So it's, um, yeah, obviously it's a very worrying time, but I think the quicker that everyone gets on the same page, the quicker we can get over it. Do you not think it'd be hard for America to get on the same page because each state is essentially like a country in itself? So based on cases and things like this, you couldn't have a sweeping movement either way, could you? No, I think I think that is one of the biggest problems. Um, I think because each state has its own rules as well, own laws mm -hmm. that have to be passed by government, it's almost impossible to to just have a clean slate. But I think with a with a situation this severe, everyone needs to be on the same page, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, would you? This is going to sound a bit not righteous, but what would you say? Have you learned any lessons? Do you think in the first week, two weeks of what's happening here, and just the last month or so of what's happened around the world? Um, I think that we are uh, seeing so many bad examples yeah. about how how we we are like a, a society, and mm. uh, I think we already knew that uh, all that was there, but uh, now it's like even more clear. But also at the same time, you see the contrary. You see so many people that um, is uh, changing and is beha uh, then behavior is uh, actually like really good and doing things for for the people and for the community and uh, for the, the ones that are in, in a big risk and i think that that's hope for me it's like if we have to be like one month or two months or three months at home and live in the worst situation of our lives but uh, after that we're gonna be better then it's a time that uh, is actually worth it yeah so um i gonna try to make sure that uh, i'm doing that with my time and that the ones that they are around me or close to me like uh, they do the same so whenever this is over like uh, we maybe we can have or take better decisions and find better ways to to live mm. yeah same you know you learn a lot about people as well you know how people react um like vera says some people react good some people react bad some people are selfish some people think about others um that's just the society we live in we can't control like what other people do um for me it's just just reiterated for me the love that i have for the game and makes me worried a little bit for when i'm in your shoes mm -hmm. when i'm 45 wait, 40, 46 46 46 you missed when i'm year. 46 um, maybe thinking about retiring and then life after football when I don't have it. That That's, for me, giving me a taste of what it's like. Mm -hmm. and I don't like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I respect that so, so much because my take on things is a bit different to a lot of other people because, as I say, I started to plan from when I was quite young. <laughs> so I, I seem quite callous about it, but I get it. I totally, totally get it. I think lessons for me... Um, you guys keep you keep making my points for me, which is great because this is why I picked you to both be in there because I felt like we'd all be on the same page. And some people are very, very selfish, but we didn't have true knowledge of that before you are in a crisis. And then some people in a crisis, they've, they've left me speechless. There have been a few times over the past few days where I felt like if there was a ship to take me off the earth, I'd be like, just take me now. I can't be here anymore. <laughs> Listening to some of the stuff which people are saying, I just don't get it. That is a real obsession with conspiracy theories and this and that. And I just think at this moment, it's not about essentially the cause. It's about the effect of your behavior. So we might find out the court, the true, true cause of everything in years to come. But right now, if someone says, do this because of this, then just do it. Because they're not doing it to take away your freedom for the sake of it. They're trying to do it for the greater good. But not, not enough people... Like even if it's just one person that doesn't understand that, that one person could be responsible for so much. People just, I don't know, it's been really frustrating. Certain people just keep missing the point over and over and over. And that's going what you said, Jack. I was going to say, uh, I saw something the other day as well, really interesting, was um, is actually the flip and the reverse and the effect that us being quarantined and going back home, the effect that it's had on nature. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the, the rivers in Venice have never looked so clear. Yeah, yeah. There's like... Yeah. You know, it's just the effect, the opposite effect that it's had, the lack of pollution in the air, like all yeah. these things. 
it's a bit like you know it just shows it almost like reiterates how you're trying to get us off the earth aren't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> you be careful you yeah relax um yeah so some of these conspiracy theories like even in my whatsapp groups people are sending audio notes saying this is going to happen on this day <laughs> and I and I know that's not true, just because it's the same voice that told me in January Messi was going to sign for Man City. <laughs> it's like it's the same voice. I recognise the person, you know, but they don't. People are happy to spread this, you know, and this type of stuff spreads quicker than the virus itself. And before you know it, there's more fear and people making decisions based around fear and misinformation. Because for me, good information comes from people who are essentially qualified to give it, and you know who they are and you know where they're coming from. But when I hear an audio note from somebody that says, you know, my brother's cousin works for the army and they say that on Thursday, this is going to happen. Too many people are like, well, this is true then. You don't know the name of the person that's talking. <laughs> you don't know that, who the person is he's talking about. Who is the ghost? You don't know any of this stuff where people are like, yeah, yeah, this must be true. Rumor. Just you, just you wait till Thursday. <laughs> But then the way the world works, when Thursday comes and nothing happens, no one talks about it anymore. Mm -hmm. But you should be like, be held accountable for this. But that's not the case. That's that's really, that's really annoyed me. And I, I think in this time as well, I've discovered I don't, I don't need as much as say I was having when I was uh, when freedom was there. From whether it comes to food or this, that, and the other, like less. Because let's be honest, when you go to a supermarket now, less is definitely gonna have to be something to think about because you can't get certain things. Because, you know, certain people panic, hoard, all that stuff. And I, I always try and do this. when I, I try and be fair because people, not everyone's built like the way that we're built. So we're not panicking, but other people are panicking. And that's just about their perspective. And you've got to respect their perspective, even though it's affecting yours, your life in some way. That's the hard, This has been the hardest time for me to have that mentality. But then it's just due to uncertainty which then leads to fear, which leads to panic. But that's just how people are. And it's, it's disappointing. But then also a bigger thing, like you said, Jack, is the importance of sports. Even in my life, as petty as it may be, like I'm used to just seeing sport every day across somewhere in the world. And you realize how much, say people have lost their freedom. And usually when they lost it, when people lose their freedom and they have to stay at home, there's a lot of people who just say, right, I'll just bet in, I'll just watch the Premier League. I'll just watch the basketball. I'll just watch the American football. I'll just watch this. And when it all goes, you realize how much of your life it actually took up. Like it was lit, sport is all, that's all I watch. I'm so, mm -hmm. such a sad person. That's all I watch. No yeah. sad. It's, it's, I, a, it's a little bit sad. But I think, a bit. The, like, it's a little bit sad. No, I, <laughs> I mean, I think everyone choose what you like. Yeah. So obviously, if we are athletes, it's normal that uh, the majority of our time is like watching yeah. sports, but, football or any but, other. But any sport. Yeah. Any sport. I'm yeah. talking from like Kabaddi in India, I think it is, <laughs> through to watching AFL in Australia. Like, it doesn't Ryan's matter. Sunday League team. Listen, <laughs> if if they were live streaming now, Sunday League football back in England, oh, 100%. I will be watching that yeah. with popcorn, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And enjoying. Exactly. Even if you have to be at home, you could be outside. Yeah. But you actually, you choose. It's and true. that's the problem that now we are not choosing. It's, it's like, true. it's like you have to be there because this is the situation. It's, it's very, very true. And and, you know, some of that makes me hopeful because for when things get better, we can get back to doing what we love doing. As a Almost like as a fan now, I can feel the energy because when any sport is available to me now, I'm excited for it. It doesn't matter who's playing, mm -hmm. where it is, or whatever it is. That moment when things go back, almost you'll almost feel like um, just the moment of normality coming back and I'll appreciate it a lot more than I did before it left. So we, I think this, what we do, just in general in society, but especially the work that we do, you really appreciate what it is and what it means to people when it goes. So when it's coming back, like, oh, it's going to be great, you know. I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going oh, to be so good. <laughs> this is, this is, I don't remember the last time I was excited, but this is like, <laughs> that's really, really something to look forward to. Um, just, I was going to ask about hopes for the year, but I'm going to skip that because we've kind of talked about that a little bit. But I want to talk about the the idea of playing games behind closed doors with no fans. How do you feel about that? Um, well, we just talk about that we are looking for the feeling of being in a place like and seeing how the people is enjoying. So for me, 
to play with uh, closed doors made no sense. Same. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I'll. I mean, if you said to me now, do you want a game? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's like uh, one person there. Yeah, exactly. But I do think the idea of like you know the Champions League games behind closed doors. I think that that was it. Was it Atalanta played? Valencia and, and then they smashed Valencia yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I watched you, the yeah. game. I was like, but it was sad. Yeah, it was yeah. sad. But I have to say, we are desperate. You watched watch, the game. Yeah, I watched watch exactly That's because we are desperate to, and we're gonna be desperate to see again to watch yes. a, a mm -hmm. football game. So I think if if we do a votation, everyone will say, yeah, sure, just. Yeah. If it's on TV, we are we are in. That's see, that's the other key perspective which we ignore sometimes. So as a player, it spoils the experience, and for fans who go to the game, yes, also spoils the experience. But if one million people watch a game, it's still only going to be the twenty-two players on the field and maybe the twenty, thirty, forty thousand fans in the stadium. But there are a million people watching the game from elsewhere, yeah. you know. So we kind of have to think about those people as well sometimes. Mm even though they're not the people that we see, so you forget about it. But realistically, like, if you ever take a moment to think how many people are watching a game which you play in, all of a sudden you, like, you realize how big the sport actually is. You know, So this playing behind closed door thing, I, I'd prefer not to, but then I get it because me as, me as a player, I'd hate it, but me as a fan, if there's a game on TV, if you tell me there's a game on TV tonight <laughs> and there's watching. nobody in the stadium, I tell you for a fact, I'm setting a reminder on my phone <laughs> and I'm making sure I watch that game. You know, because that's yeah. I just want to see people kicking the ball around or just doing something. And we always say that the sport is the entertaining of the people. Yes. So it's like now it's actually when when the virus is gone, that will be the the opportunity to to actually prove it even more. Yeah. And uh, also it's the way that uh, we have the athletes to maybe thank to mm -hmm. all of fans. And yeah. uh, so if if we can make uh, happy like people happy. We should think about it, but yeah, obviously yeah, I think... Uh, With your hard head and you one perspective only. <laughs> <laughs> just think about other people. It's not just all about you and what you want to do. I get it, I you're, a, it, back. I I get it you're a champion, but come on. <laughs> other people need to watch as well. So to close, just I'm going to ask you three questions. Yeah, oh, it's One question with three sides to it. Yeah. When do you think you'll feel comfortable enough to train? How about you, Jack? You go first. You mean full training? With full the team? training with the team. I, I, I don't. I honestly, it's such a difficult question because I, I feel like I would, I would want everyone to be tested. And then, if, if the club said to me, "We'll take a test. We'll get every player to take a test. You have to report to training at, mm -hmm. you know, nine o'clock." You're in the doors of the training facility. As soon as you leave, you can't do anything else but go home. Mm -hmm. I'd be comfortable to do that now, as but, long as everyone was tested. Okay, how about you, Ben? Yeah, exactly the same. So it's all about testing. Mm. But unfortunately, the model here is whereby not everybody can have access to a test. Okay. Well, unless you're in the NBA, because they can do what they want. Yeah. But, I'd, yeah, anyway. For the rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly, for the rest of civilization. <laughs> um, so say, by some miracle, all of a sudden, everybody has access to a test, and people can now be tested. Would you then feel comfortable playing against another team, even though they could be from a different state and you don't know how they do things? Yeah, maybe I wouldn't get as touch tight to play as <laughs> You don't get touch tight anyway. <laughs> Leave it out. It's not your game. This isn't your game either, Vera. It's basically, it's a question for me. When will I feel safe? <laughs> for me, it's like I'm going to be feeling safe and uh, like really comfortable to playing a game and training a game whenever we see that in a normal life, is more or less okay. So when we see that uh, there are not that many uh, cases anymore and that uh, you can see that um, it's actually under control. But I think that for that, it's going to take so long. Mm. And uh, as many days and time that uh, pass that uh, people is now actually in quarantine inside of them places, it's time that we are losing for later mm -hmm. so uh, I think uh, I don't know who gonna take the decision to say okay now it's safe to, mm -hmm. to do all that but um, yeah I think we don't know so we have to wait and we're gonna feel it yeah yeah I, I, I agree I think um, 
I think from like playing against teams, I think well the stats I think are gonna plateau. You yeah. Know, people, the deaths are going up at the moment. I think it tripled in in England. But you know why they're going up though, don't you? As a concert. This is me trying to dispel any conspiracy theories at all. So one of the things which a lot of people don't mention about the virus and so on is that the more testing you have is the more cases that you'll see and the more deaths as a consequence. Right. If you want to make it seem like nothing's going on, test nobody and the numbers don't go up at the same rate. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not unfortunately, for some, if you don't make it political, you can be honest, but when people make it political, they stop, they try and limit the numbers. Because if it's to be non-political, everyone should be able to have access to be tested if they worry or if they need to be checked. Mm. And it seems like it's a crisis. But the big moment, as Vero hinted to, isn't necessarily when the cases, like cases could keep going for a long time, but it's when the number of new cases starts to mm. lower off, which is the whole concept of flattening the curve or whatever. Right. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, to go back to your point. Yeah, I think when, it, when, the, when the stats start to plateau and then we see the first day of the numbers start to go down. I think that's when... That's when you'll be up for it, yeah? I think so, yeah. yeah. And would that be the same for... This is when it's a bit different now. How about to travel? So you're living in a world now whereby the cases have started to go down, but travel remains the same. Yeah, I mean, f for me, I, I would, I think at the moment, rather take a bus from oh, from Lord. Utah to Florida oh, than travel. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness gracious me. <laughs> You don't fancy well, it? Absolutely not, no, but safe travels. Hey, but you're used to the MLS, you know, like the private jets and the the charter flights. I think that, did he say MLS? That be, that, did he say MLS? It could be actually a, a fantastic solution if uh, we have like a, a private jet for the, for mm -hmm. the club. So uh, we are make sure uh, all the players, the three teams. Say that again. Let's say it again. <laughs> Listen, if they if they wanted to give us a private jet, they would give us a private jet. But we don't have a private jet, so maybe they don't want to. Unfortunately, maybe, maybe it's out. coming. Maybe now it's coming. <laughs> there was talk, to be fair, that just before we um, we stopped, that we were going to have private planes for six weeks, and then the next day it's like, nah, we were done. Nobody's going to play anymore. So, yeah, I think I want to train. I'm like you, I'd like to know if everyone um, is healthy or not. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be imminent anytime soon. So it's just we're just left in this moment, unfortunately, of, um, of uncertainty and not knowing when society will get better and not knowing when, as a consequence, we can start doing what we do and what we love to do. And that, for me, is, is essentially the hardest bit. But, you know, I like to think anyway today we've shed some light on what it's like to be in our situation right now for for the monarchs for the royals um for our so you know this we're all in this together we're all in the same position and although we're getting little bits of different information here there and everywhere you know this thing has shown to me that we're all basically the same as everybody else because when it comes down to it we're not working other people aren't working we all have to be sensible because then we can all come out on the other side and be in a better place but there we go but i hope things get better sooner than later and that people remain safe and listen to make just make sure you listen to good advice from medical professionals and not just conspiracy theorists on social media but yeah thank you very much for coming in guys i hope you listeners have enjoyed that three different perspectives on one situation and um yeah, hopefully we'll be able to play some ball soon. You guys can all leave your houses soon as well. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks to uh, producer Ryan in the back for not criticizing us for anything we've said. Thanks to Mountaineer Studios, Draper Utah, and please send your voice memos to digitalrsl.com. And Jack and Vera, seriously, thank you again for doing this. This is this has been my most uh, most enjoyable one so far because it's been so so honest. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.